Teen lovers, it's mid-October over here in Northern California Zone 9B and gosh, this has got to be my favorite time of year because seeds germinate so quickly and plants grow so quickly. It's still really warm over here. Uh, you know, the temperature actually is in the late 80s, sometimes even in the early 90s. So it's still pretty hot here and we've been having several heat waves um, for some reason this year more than ever before. So I am taking advantage of the beautiful warm weather to start a lot of new seeds for my fall and winter garden. And I'm also taking advantage of this opportunity to get some transplants in the ground. Now, as I said, I live in California zone 9B and I am actually going to be planting along with Scott Head from Black Gumbo. I'll put a link to his YouTube channel. Uh, he lives in Texas and the weather there, you know, even though it's zone 9, it's very different. It's hot and humid and over here it is uh, hot and not humid at all. It's very, very dry. So the same plants probably grow very differently in both these different zone nines and the only thing that we probably have in common is the fact that we've got nice warm weather and our frost date is more or less the same middle of December so let's just see how his plants grow and how my plants grow and so we can compare and contrast and see the difference now there will be other factors too uh, Scott's a very seasoned gardener I've been gardening only for about a couple of years now and his garden is much more mature he's got much better soil um, I've been trying to build my soil but you know it's a journey that uh, building of soil, that soil ecosystem takes takes a few years to get established. But I'm going to try my best, maybe add a little extra fertilizer here and there to give my plants a boost and let's see how they do. And for those of you that have been following along on the single seed challenge, I'm going to throw in a little clip at the end to show you how my single seed challenge 2020 also started by Black Gumbo, how that ended and the little surprise that came with it. So. So in this bed, I've planted a few cabbages. Now, as you can see, these cabbages have been subject to a lot of damage and the damage is being caused by, let me see if I can find them. Actually, I can find one right here. This guy, it's a roly poly. And my beds somehow, they just get devastated by roly polies. All these cabbages are badly eaten, but I think some of them are actually recovering and going to make it. But there were a few sacrificial ones. As an example over here, I've got one that it's not going to make it, you know, but that's okay. And that's why I plant more than I should in, you know, in this, from a spacing perspective. Uh, these cabbages grow pretty big, so you want to keep them a good, I'd say a good couple of feet apart. And uh, as you can see, I've spaced them roughly one foot apart, but I'm anticipating that they will be subject to all kinds of critter damage. And so I will let the ones that are growing nicely grow to uh, adulthood and I'll trim off the others as, or they will get trimmed off by the roly polies. I wanted to show you what I'm doing to keep the roly poly population under control. And I obviously need to put more of these, but these, these are beer traps. So, um, they're just a little container and as you can see in this at the side here I've cut slits big slits and uh, I've put the beer inside now I kind of spilt everything but that's okay and then you bury it so that you know it's the the level of the slit is kind of at the level of the soil it's easier for them to fall into the trap and let me show you what's inside the lid on the top of course is to protect um, the beer from getting watered down when I water it but even so some water gets in through the sides but that's okay but look at this just look at this this is all this is a roly-poly graveyard and these would have been on my plants if they if it hadn't been for this but obviously I can't even keep up with them so I've got to put a few more beer traps here and there so that I can try to save something like this So in this bed, I'm going to be planting carrots and beetroots. 
Now you'll notice that this bed, while it has mostly been prepped for winter, other than just a few more plants that I've got to pull out or push aside, uh, it is covered with these hoops and the hoops are covered with tool. Now the purpose of the tool is uh, threefold. Number one, it is hopefully going to protect the plants from any flying insects and beetroots for some reason seem to be a target of all creatures great and small so hopefully this will help uh, it is also going to protect it from the leaves and debris that keeps falling from this oak tree that is above my property this is going to drop its leaves over the next month or so like crazy so while the leaves do form a good mulch they do tend to stifle out little seedlings so hopefully the tool will keep most of it away and then the last reason is my kitty likes to use my nicely prepared beds as her litter box and other things so this while this won't really prevent her from getting in if she wants to she will but it'll at least serve as a deterrent so what I'm going to be doing is uh, I've got a few beans that are left over that are past their prime I'm just going to be cutting them off at the base leave the roots in the ground and then I'm going to be digging some furrows into the the soil the soil as you can see is through the tool <laughs> is a little bit coarse and I want to give the uh, little tiny seedlings a really good opportunity to be able to push through so what Scott Head from Black Gumbo did was he created these furrows and in the furrows he laid some potting soil nice soft potting soil and uh, that was where he planted the seeds so that's what I'm going to do with the teeny tiny carrot seeds as well as the beetroot seeds one thing that the tool does not do is protect against the creatures that are already in the soil and the ones that I am, am most afraid of are the roly-polies and for that I'll be bringing out the, the big guns which is my beer traps and they seem to work quite well. So here are the varieties of beets and carrots that I'm going to be planting. This over here is a cylindra beet, this is a ruby queen, this is a beets, sorry, bull's blood beet. Say that three times, five times fast. Um, over here I've got an ox heart carrot, I've got royal chantonnay, I've got some kind of a rainbow mix, and then I've got yellow carrots, and I've got the Danvers uh, 126. So it looks like I've got more carrots than beets, but I'm going to plant them all up now. It's getting a little dark, so I've got to work quickly. So as you can see here, I have laid out my uh, lines with some compost and it is fine compost so the seeds should be able to push through quite easily you can see these carrot seeds are really really tiny so i'm gonna have to um, be as careful as i can not to pour them all into one spot so just very gently sort of sprinkle them Whoa. And I'm going to go ahead and do that. It's difficult for me to do left-handed. Then I'm going to kind of scrape it into the, the soil. So kind of like this. So I've got this here. I'll just kind of move the soil around a little bit. And then I'm going to water, in it, water it in with a watering can. So I wanted to show you what the beet seeds look like. So these seeds are, I understand they're actually fruit. And so each one of them contains multiple plants. And so you will have multiple beets come up with, from each seed, anywhere from maybe two to even five. So you'll have multiple seedlings and so you're going to have to thin them. Now I usually leave them alone up to three seedlings because I notice that they tend to push each other apart. But if it's any more than that, I will thin them. So space them about... Mm, uh, maybe about three inches or so apart. You have to think about the full size of the beet, what it's going to be, and then accordingly give it enough space. And know that the more, more space you give them, within reasonable limits of course, the bigger the beets will be. So, um, And you just want to kind of push it down into the soil and cover them up. 
So folks, it got pretty late last night and I couldn't film the last part of sowing my carrots and beets. So I wanted to show you what I did finally. So I sowed only half the bed because uh, on second thoughts I figured that I would use the back part of the bed for some of my brassicas. I've all the front part is where my carrots and beets are. I found an old piece of tool that I've used to cover it. Now. Carrots especially need to be constantly moist if you want them to germinate. You cannot let them let the soil dry out. In fact, many people put pieces of wood on top of the carrot seeds when they plant them. I don't do that because when I've done that in the past, guess what? My roly polies love to come and hide under the wood and that serves as a magnet for them. So I just have this piece of tool that I've put over it. It's got a bunch of holes in it. That's fine. But it will keep some of the moisture in the soil. So that's what I plan to do and we will see how long these take to germinate. Now I will come out here and I will water twice a day, morning and evening, in order to keep that soil moist for the carrots to germinate. I wanted to show you the peas that I planted. So I'm succession planting peas. Uh, these peas that you see on the left and on the right were actually planted on the same day in the first week of September. It's October 13th today. And um, as you can see, these peas, which are sugar snap peas, they've already started flowering. So it's been about five weeks, so almost six weeks, and I'm already getting flowers on the sugar snap peas. The shelling peas are a little bit slower. These are English peas, um, but they are definitely growing and growing nicely. And they're starting to cling to the trellis. So I've got a bit of blank space here. I haven't figured out what I'm gonna plant here. Mostly arugula, I'm thinking. I've got some late season peas that are very growing very, very slowly, but um, you can see them flowering as well. So maybe I will get one last harvest from my beans. These are, I believe these are provider beans. I've also got some kohlrabis. These were from transplants that I grew from seed, but I also threw in some seeds and I can see a lot of them germinating. I threw these in about huh, maybe about a week ago or so. So lots of kohlrabi that I'm going to have to thin out in a little bit. This is my second succession of sweet peas. So I planted these about two weeks after I planted the previous. And then these on the left, sorry, on the right here are shelling peas that I planted about a week after I planted these. So as you can see, I've got a good succession going uh, of uh, peas as well as uh, uh, of snap peas as well as shelling peas. And in the far end there, I've got some fava beans or broad beans growing. So they're growing very rapidly and very nicely. So let's see how they do. Lastly, I wanted to show you my fall nursery. So I've got this hoop tunnel here. Uh, I've opened it up in the front because I'm gonna climb into it now but I've got the hoop tunnel with the row cover on it for a couple of reasons number one I've got a lot of brassicas in here and I want to protect them from the flying bugs and number two it actually provides a little bit of shade I'm still in fairly warm weather it's getting cooler every day but over here in California zone 9b we still have quite a bit of hot days left in the season our first frost date is uh, December 15th or so so I've got a ways to go but look what I've got going on here these and these uh, five gallon buckets are actually tree kale that I grew from seed now typically you do not want to grow tree kale from seed tree kale or collards you want to grow them from cuttings but I got these seeds from um, YouTube youtuber that I respect very much called uh, plant abundance and I am growing these seeds because he's got beautiful beautiful uh, tree kale growing in his garden and I figured you know what even if it's not true to parent, it's still going to be a great kale. So I've got a couple of kohlrabis that need to be planted in the ground very soon. They're growing in these little cups. And they're growing nicely in these little cups. Oh, my lettuce died. There was a little lettuce growing in the, in the cracks in the, the seed tray here. And it has died because it ran out of water. I've got a nice beautiful grow bag full of cut and come again lettuce and I harvest from this bag uh, roughly every three to four days and it grows back very very quickly. This one over here is a purple tree collard. I actually got three, uh, four cuttings from uh, 
project tree collard and only one of them came up so I'm hoping that this one won't die so it's uh, been up potted from a tiny little pot that I started it in into this uh, bigger bucket and I'm gonna grow this in this bucket for a little while more until it's tall enough for me to transplant and maybe get a few cuttings out of more um, kohlrabis here growing in this uh, makeshift container I was wanting to see whether I could recycle some of these I don't think I like what I'm seeing it's kind of falling apart but um, yeah those uh, Brussels sprouts need to go in the bed that I just put the carrots and beets in I've got some more different types of uh, lettuce as well as uh, savoy cabbage growing in here and then some more cauliflower and cabbage growing in there and a rogue mango plant growing in the middle from the compost that I put in there. So these are all going to be up potted hopefully in the next week or so. And uh, yeah, I'll just keep adding little seeds here. The advantage of uh, having a long growing season like I've got here in California, Northern California, is that I can plant year round and I can start seeds year round. And that's exactly what I plan to do. So that's it with this video guys. I hope you enjoyed it and if you did please do consider clicking that like button and the subscribe button. And until next time live green and love your greens. I just wanted to do one final update on my a single seed challenge plant. So as you guys who have been following along know, I have a Berry's Crazy Cherry and today is September 24th. It's a few days into fall and yes, it has finally come to an end. Now, uh, I kept this alive as long as I possibly could. As you can see, I kept those final little green sprigs. And no, they're not doing well anymore. This plant is gone. But I did want to show you one final little surprise. And I'm going to get close to it so you can see it yourself. Look at this fantastic caterpillar. I don't even know what it is. I'm going to have to do some Googling with Google Lens to try and figure out what it is, but it's huge. It's easily, you know, three inches long at least. And it is enjoying my single seed challenge plant and I'm going to let it enjoy it as long as it can. I'm sure it'll grow into a beautiful moth or a beautiful butterfly, most likely a moth. But let it do its thing, let it enjoy the last of my single seed challenge plant. Goodbye and good night, my beautiful plant. Okay, so I did a little bit of research and uh, this is actually a Goliath hornworm, or uh, which grows into a beautiful moth called the Carolina Sphinx moth or tobacco hawk moth, I think is what they said the other name for it is. So one little tip, guys, if you want to figure out what uh, either caterpillar or some critter that you find in your garden or anything really a plant you want to try to identify it Google Lens is a wonderful free app that you can use so look it up Google Lens you can get it on the iPhone or Android device it's a and it is a wonderful app that you can use to a free app that you can use to identify all kinds of things all right, green lovers, until next time, live green and love your greens, even if it's a green little critter.